Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we've got our host, my name's Tom, and we've got Rich as well, who's joined us for our Saracens Foundation In Focus webinar. Really, really pleased to have Alec Clary uh, and Kev Sorrell as well to, to join us. Guys, thanks very much for, for joining us and, and welcome. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? All right. Really good, thanks. So, thanks again for, for coming on board. So, we're going to have a little bit of a chat about the the championship season, uh, which you guys have yeah, been, been involved in. Uh, but then also, the yeah. Sunday, uh, which is our Saracens Foundation match day. Uh, which luckily we, we are able to host this year um, and it provides us with the vital funds which then supports the, the foundation to continue the amazing work it does in, in the local community. Um, so when we, uh, when we are at the place, um, we have a couple of different ways we're able to do this, which number one is the sweepstake. So we have um, a five pound sweepstake at the minute where everyone watching now is able to jump on that it's five pounds to enter uh you're able to guess the the score and the minute which the first try is scored uh five pounds there as i said uh but the winner will get a signed match worn shirt off the back of sunday's performance so please 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 feel free to get involved as I said, all these funds goes directly to the Saracens Foundation in supporting the work they do. So, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of kick it off. So, Alec, coming coming straight to you. It's how was Sunday? It was a, it was an amazing performance, and um, what was the mood like in the camp afterwards? Oh man, way I was buzzing because uh, I've been in the champ for three years and I've never beat England. So obviously we beat them before, but like having a big win like that, I was overjoyed. Um, in terms of in the camp at the minute, I think, I think obviously there's that, you know, that excitement that like that like everyone's everyone's get happy at the minute. But there's also that focus. We've got one more game left. You know what I mean? So we never take out for granted. So we've got one more game left. It's not finished yet. So we just need to get on it. Awesome. And Kev, for you, you must as a coaching setter, you must be so proud of, of the performance the boys put in off the back of the two leg final how is it for you for a coaching setup yeah uh the, i said it to the last today the most pleasing thing is uh i've seen a lot of what we put on the pitch at the weekend in the last two weeks in training so as a coach you sort of you you see the prep and you you feel like you're in a good place you just hope the boys put it on the pitch at the weekend and, and, and we did that in space at the weekend so that the prep was really good to go build into that game and uh so we were in a good place but it was uh it was pretty special then to do it on the day as well yeah yeah it was, it was a really really good performance so kind of diving into the the, the rugby side of the things how, how did the team kind of deal with that pressure you know with Saracens coming down to the championship, it was it was almost like the World Cup final for all the teams you were you were playing in. What what was the pressure like? And Alec, as a player, going away to all these amazing teams in the champ, what what did it kind of feel like on the pitch every week in week out? Well, I think because the lads are so like knowledgeable, everyone knows what they what their role is inside and out, and I think. Uh, when you come to play at these champ teams, as long as you've got your knowledge down, then that gives you that gives you the freedom to to like actually go on the pitch and be confident. Um, so I think every single uh, every single Saturday, I think we have been confident and uh, confident in our ability and knowledge and our knowledge. So yeah, it was, it's been all exciting and stuff. But yeah, just I think we've been really, you know, really confident with it. And Kev, was it a different type of pressure for you, but from a, from a normal, say, or all the previous seasons uh, to, to this year? I think it's been the, the biggest difference is like the in terms of the analysis side of things because we're normally sort of quite thorough in what we do on the in the opposition. But the uh, the footage that we were getting of the of the opposition it was it wasn't wasn't the best. You couldn't see that much, so it forced us to concentrate quite a bit more on us doing week to week so it's quite a normally we try and get a balance between looking at the opposition and coming up with plans for them as opposed to this year we've focused a lot more on improving on us week on week on week and what we're where we've been going so it's been quite a fresh change from from by doing that really 
Awesome. And, and on that point, obviously you're saying one of the one of the key differences for you guys was, you know, the the, the lack of, of of game footage, not being able to really uh, put as much prep into into the team you're about to play as potentially would in the prem. What what would you say are sort of the biggest things, that, biggest differences you've noticed between um, the, like the standard of the play uh, and 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 where strengths are within the championship compared to the prem? Is that for me or Kev? Oh yes. Well, I guess I guess both of you. I mean, I guess Alex, <laughs> start start your way because obviously you're you're used to the you played in chapter four. I guess you had a bit of a inside knowledge on that. Um. Well, yeah, like dropping down. It's uh, the biggest difference is for me is, is just like, like people get away with a lot more schneidy things in the chat. Yeah. There's no there's no TMOs, right? So there's a lot more schneidy stuff goes on. So you've got to be prepared for that. Um, but I think I, I think as the lads go, I think the lads have just stepped up and um, took that on the chin. And uh, every week we've brought it. So yeah, I, I mean. It's the, the physicality in the forwards as well. Um, that's massively different to the Prem. In, in my experience, but I've only had like seven games for the Prem. Like, so in my experience, the physicality, like, and like, in a, in a sense, you know, the, the cheating sometimes, you know, in the scrums and stuff, I, I, no TMO. The ref can't see everything. So I think we have really adapted to that. So, yeah, positive. Yeah, so that's actually something that. Through the, through the season, as you, as you mentioned, Alex. So. Lad, your, your mic's not working. It's going really low. You're really quiet. You're really quiet. Can, you not, can you guys, what about if I sit this close? Is that better? <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> Are you scaring everybody with your phone, with how close you are to the camera? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm saying that's actually something that Tom and I have noticed through the season. Was, they're pretty big lads in the championship, their physical sides. Was that something that you kind of prepared for on game one? Ev? Is that is that something that you you kind of anticipated when when we start you started the season off? Um, I suppose we had a bit of a taste of it in the in the warm up games in the trial finals cup. So it's pretty evident that it was a, a little bit more. It was a little bit different in terms of it was a lot of physicality up front and it was a real battle up there. So. If if that sort of um, if you didn't get parity in that area there you like it's, you struggled a little bit and and when we learned that during those games um, but yeah I think as Alec Alec said like refereeing is a, t a tough enough job anyway with everything that's going on, on the pitch so when there's no TMO there and uh, it was uh, it was quite lively some of the things that were going on, on the pitch so we had to learn to adapt with some frustrations around that in terms of the protection of the players and that was. Some some games were a little bit naughty, really, with some of the stuff that was going on. You just hope that y you got off there all right. Um, but I, th I think the other thing that around the difference in the championship was the the, the, the variation, the quality of the pitches. Like, yeah, it was just Cornish Pirates was like half a mile from the sea and like bone dry, and like the wind was ripping through there. Then you went to to, to Richmond, and the gr grass was like a field. Cattle could have been uh, kept on that pitch, so it was, it was a little bit. It was a little bit different. The pitches were varying quite a bit. So yeah, was, uh, no disrespect to the groundsman. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been a holiday that week, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, uh, Alec, going back back to you, you sort of, as you mentioned, you you spent some time in the championship. How, how do you? Obviously, the championship's been proven to be a very good and strong breeding ground for rugby talent over the years. How do you think that your experiences in the championship have helped to uh, improve you as a player? Like I said, it's character building in the champ. Uh, like, like I said before, people get away with a lot more shiny things. And I think that, in a sense, when you're a young lad as well, it toughens you up. Um, playing in the champ, like I've had my head shoved up my bum quite a bit. Um, but you do learn from that. And you take them experiences and at the time, you know, you don't think you're going to learn anything from them, but you do. And, uh, yeah, I think I think the champ is a really good place to get young lads in, give them an experience against, like, like men, some men that's come from the Prem, um, coming down and experience. It's all about experience in the champ. And, um, 
yeah, there's a lot of talent in there. So it's a good place to talk about. No, absolutely. So we're just going to go on now to something a bit uh, a bit more lighthearted, some um, more quick fire questions. So with these questions, tr uh, try and give the first thing, first answer that comes to your head. And if we start with Alec, if you answer first, then, then Kev, if you go next. Who would be your, who would you say is your sporting hero? I'm going to say Vincent Cock. Because he's a, <laughs> oh, he's a hell of a player and he gave me his old PS4 the other day, so... I can't, I can't, but I'm, I'm very, I've got loads of gratitude for him. By you, Kev, any, any uh, sporting heroes giving you any electronics or? Uh, no, I've not been as fortunate as that, really. Uh, I'd say, I suppose for early on, rugby wise, I really like Jonathan Davis, and I'm, I'm sad to say it as an Englishman, but I did have a Wales number 10 shirt, which is really bad to admit. But as a West Ham fan, I'd say, I remember the first match my dad took me to and Mark Ward, I was in the chicken run and Mark Ward was right there and I remember touching his shirt. So I always really liked him as a player. So, Perfect. Uh, Alec, if you could play a different sport professionally, what would you go for? Uh, well, I'd go for strong man, but I'm not tall enough and I'm not strong enough. So <laughs> if I could do it, I would, but I can't. So. Kev? Uh, yeah, I'd play centre midfield alongside Declan Rice, I think, um, at West Ham. Or, uh, purely because the venue is one of the greatest sporting venues I've ever been to, I'd like to be a professional darts player and play at Ali Pali. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good night. That'd be a good one. Um, I'll split this question up. Alec, fastest forward at Saracens? Uh, I'm going to say Tim Swinson. <laughs> like, down when hill, down hill, downhill with the wind. Man, when you <laughs> yeah. he lifts out the line, it's just pure dust on that field. You don't know where that guy's gone. Man, if he sniffs out the line, you know about it. <laughs> but yeah, Kev, I'm guessing that wouldn't have been your um your pick then. Swinnow's Swino's a bit like an oil tanker. Eh? Like once he gets it takes him a lot of time to get up to speed, but then he's when he's going, he's hurtling, so he needs to run up to it. But yeah. Um Forward wise, I probably Andy Christie's pretty sharp actually. I think he might be uh, up there actually. Yeah, that's a good show. What about what about in the backs? Uh, Ali Crosdale is electric and Rotty. They're both pretty sharp actually. So, I have to say Rotty yeah. as well. Yeah, more so than Swino or who, who, who's winning that race? Do you reckon then? Uh, it depends how long Swinnow's had time to get the speed. Yeah. Give <laughs> him yeah. half a mile to warm up, eh? <laughs> and, and how much shopping Ali Crosdale's carrying as well. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, the next one was, who's the strongest forward? But I'm, I'm guessing you're putting yourself forward on that one, Alec. Ralph. Ralph, yeah. I'd say. Ralph, he's everything I want to be in the gym. He's... Uh, Sometimes he lets me spot them. Sometimes he does. <laughs> he's my hero, lad. He is very. He's, he's a specimen. Like he's been blessed with genetics, and I haven't. So okay, I've dropped the ginger ball. Hair. Off that one. Ginger hair. <laughs> ginger hair. He's, he's, he's been like a. Crap I, I, I thought you were going to say your hero, Vincent Cock, was your, was the strongest one. Imagine doing weights with him. He could be. He could be, but he doesn't put the effort in. He could be. <laughs> he could be strong as hell, but he doesn't put the effort in. <laughs> But what about uh, what about through the backs? Um, it has to be it has to be one, Kev. It has to be Juan. 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 Exactly. Oh, yeah, isn't he? He's stacked. Pound actually. for pound, that man is is, is the strongest. Really? Uh, yeah, he looks pretty built. Yeah, he's, he's a strong he's lad as well. So it's question it's question my whole philosophy. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. Man, what a man lives on veganism. <laughs> <laughs> So, pre-game rituals. Firstly, Alec, do you have a pre-game ritual? Um, I always, always write. I always have wrist straps, and I always write my missus and my two daughters' initials on my left hand, and my nieces and nephew on my right initials. Just always, just always something I've done. So, okay, cool. What about what are you, Kev? Did you have any, or do uh, you have any now? Well, it's uh, rituals. Are more, it's more, more more of a routine. Like I just get up on a match day, and I, I've got a calf around the corner from me, and I've done it for the last like fifteen years. Really, just gone into the calf, got the papers, and sat down and had poached eggs. So it just seems to be seems to be working all right. So <laughs> yeah, I'm doing that. It works. It works. Lastly, uh, Alec, what's your biggest phobia? Uh, I don't like tight spaces. 
I nearly died on a bouncy castle when I was a kid. <laughs> and ever since then, yeah. Um, yeah, basically what happened, do you know when you're a kid and there's a, someone's mm-hmm. hiding a bouncy castle in the garden? Well, the kids like to put the, when you put the machine down on its face, the bouncy castle goes down and then they like yeah, to yeah. back up to play with it type thing. Anyhow, I fell into a crack, like a crack in, in the space. I was already small, fell into a crack like that and they started blowing it back up. And as I blow back up, the, 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 the sides would start enclosing me in. I was like that, and uh, they came, and I, I nearly suffocated. Honest to God, nearly died. If it wasn't for me cousin prying it apart, I wouldn't be eating today. I tell you, I nearly died. Jeez, I, I think we know why you don't like small spaces. Then, yeah. Would you, would you go on? A, would you go on a big one and like try and get your confidence back? Well, there's one. There's one this weekend, isn't there? At the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll like, give it a go. <laughs> but if, if you're there next to it, just shaking with a drink in your hand, even though you got too close. <laughs> Blush bar. Kev, any phobias? Oh, any uh, any bouncing, uh, bouncing uh, castle stories? Or? No, snakes. Yeah, same. Them. Just snakes the way they move really really horrible. I tried to, We a mate, a mate's friend went all a little bit weird and converted his whole house into... Like he started breeding snakes and they had these drawers of all these different grass snakes. And he was like, come on, come on, they're not going to bite you or anything like that. And I thought, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. And I went there and he opened the drawer and they were just like, Tss. and it's just like, no, no. Yeah. Not for me. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Absolutely not for me either. Right. That was our quick fire questions done. Cheers, guys. That, that was awesome. Um, so we, we at the Saracens Foundation, we're a sport for social change charity. So we use sport to, to impact the lives of our beneficiaries um, all around health, education and employability. Can you, Kev, I'm going to start with you on this one. What, is, what has sport done for you personally, professionally, socially? What, what impact has sport had for you? Well, it's been huge because it's all I've known since I left school. Really, I've been been very fortunate to be involved with with the club since then. So it's uh, it's it's been a source of employment number one. But I think like I think what what being involved in professional sport is it gives you like it gives you a certain bit of dis- it gives you discipline to to be persistent and deal with struggles and setbacks and you hang in there and you've got the support of your teammates and you learn to work with one another and find out other people's strengths and weaknesses and what 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 might be a weakness for me is a strength for someone else. So you lean on other people and you get to communicate with those people. So there's a whole different range of things that you can get out of being through sport, really. But I just yeah, it's it's been as I say, it's been a it's been a way of life for me, really. That's been pretty fortunate to be involved in it. Yeah, cool. And and Alec, coming to you, what do you think sport has done for you as a person, or you know, socially, emotionally, um, again, professionally? What what type of impact? Do you think sport in general has had on you and, and maybe what type of impact could it have on other people as well? Well, when I was a kid, I, I could be pretty antisocial at times. And um, I find that sport did help us get out there, get us talking to people um, and better communicate and understand people as well. Um, it also keeps your weight down. So can't complain about that. Um, on other people, I think like, it's really good for people who are not much confidence. I think getting yourself around that social sector and like getting even like local rugby clubs, like getting yourself that family and that support system, it's really positive for young lads and lasses especially. Yeah, that's huge. We we, we see the the impact, uh, especially around confidence and, and social skills in our projects. So uh, I, I would hundred percent agree agree with both of you there. Kind of, Kev, maybe. Going back a couple of years now, so when did you when did you know that sport or professional sport was, I guess, more than just a hobby, more than more than just turning up on a weekend? When when did you make it, or when did you know it was going to become your profession, your life, uh, and your surroundings? Well, I, I didn't really at first because it was it was my first year here. It was amateur, so like that was the year they they just there was a vote for it to go professional in '95, and then that was. It was like they gave the clubs a year to transition to go to professional. So it was, um, it, it wasn't really an option when I was leaving school, but I just knew that like where I grew up, Saracens was the local club if you wanted to carry on playing. So I just went down there and had a trial and then played, played through the course of that year and then got offered a contract at the end of that year. So it, was, it wasn't it was really an option, but the, 
when it became a reality, it was like, right, let's let's have a go at this sort of thing. Like this is could be a bit of fun, really. And did you did you have a plan that you know obviously at the time when it was an amateur an amateur sport, did you have a plan of a certain professional or a plan for life that you were looking looking well, at? Initially, yeah, I was going to do dentistry, but I failed my chemistry, so that 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 sort of went out the window. So then I actually started a psychology degree at Middlesex University. Um, but that didn't go too successfully because um, post post the freshers period, sort of it it, it didn't really pan out as I thought it would. So yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't, didn't stay too long at there. Enjoy enjoy freshers week though. Uh, yeah, it was quite good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Alec, how, how about you? When when was you know what what was your pathway into the sport? When did you know that professional sport was something that you could dive into? Well, I obviously grew up in Bishop, uh, Bar UFC, Bishop Orton Rugby Club. Uh, massive shout out to them lads. Um, rugby's not massive up north. Uh, it's all football. Um, so one day I just went down the rugby club. I think I've said this before, like I was getting really, really like, well, I was piling on the pounds. Uh, my mum was a bit worried. Uh, she was like, look, Lou's got to do a sport. Lou. So I went down the rugby club and... Uh, on my first game, I scored like six tries. So I thought, mm, maybe, maybe there's something here. I haven't scored a try since like. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's something here. And uh, I suppose I realised that it was something that I'd have to stick at is when my mum and dad started spending a fortune on us. Like new boots, undershorts, the petrol to take us to games. I thought, I kind of packed this in now after they spent all this money. So probably is that. Awesome. That's really good insight. Thanks for that. <laughs> What would you say? Um, so, so then, obviously, you've you've been to a few different clubs now at Saris. What would you say is the main difference? Take take out maybe training facilities and you know the the, the home stadium that kind of stuff. What, what's the biggest difference between sort of Saracens and then other clubs that you've been at? Um, I suppose it's it's like everyone has respect for each other in Saris. doesn't matter where where you're at in your career everyone has loads of respect for each other like the ACAB boys all train with the like first teamers it's just everyone has such a good like relationship with each other and that's very rare to find at a club because uh, a lot of clubs can be clicky and um, certain clicks sit at certain tables and stuff like that I've been at clubs where like the academy have their table and then the, the big boys have their table and stuff like that. And there's none of that at Sarri's. And it is, honest to God, it's the one of the nicest clubs I've ever been at. Everyone is just so down to earth, and everyone just wants to help you. So I'd say that's one of the biggest difference. Okay, well, how, how would you say that, so, so take where Alex said now with the club and with what he said about the club how, how different was it when you first joined obviously it was different because of the amateur status but in terms of what he was talking about and and you know how 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 everyone gets on with everyone and respects everyone is is that something that you think was always has always been there since you started or is that something that has really been like um changed over the last few years yeah i think like it was, it was always a good vibe and there was always a good set of lads but what i think what I think we lacked as a club, because we we had sort of we were very transient that we changed the coach every two years and changed the players every couple of years. What we've done since Brendan came in and then so Brendan did eighteen months and then Small has now moved that on and done put his own stamp on it is that we've created an identity for the club. So and which to, is what Alec actually spoke about earlier on, like that feeling of belonging to a club, a feeling of belonging to something, and I think. What we've been, what's been brilliant is we've created an identity about what being a Saracens about, what being at Saracens is, and I think in my time at the club, that's been the best thing that we've done to 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 create this feeling of being properly belonging to something and properly contributing to something. And as Al said, everyone can be themselves here, and we've we've got all sorts, but they've all got a place to contribute. So that's what we try and do, really. Yeah, absolutely. So would you? So presumably, with working so hard to maintain that and, and and ensure that that's sort of protected and looked after do you find when you when new players come in part of the process of bringing a player in is obviously you want them on their rugby talent but actually 
you're really looking at them as a as an individual and a person make sure they're the right fit for the for the club not just on the field as well yeah definitely i think that that um the time you meet the player and sort of uh sit down with them and discuss where they're at and what what they want to do and like you sort of feeling them out you just sort of you, you sort of get a feel for them within the first five or ten minutes about whether they'd be a good fit for us and I didn't sit in on the uh, the interview with Al because that would all be the forwards coaches, but the reports that came back was uh, that he'd be, he'd be a great fit for us. So it was, uh, yeah. Okay. But you, you do, you, it's, it's so important that you get that, the, the character side right so that they, they mix in and fit in with what, what, we, what we're about, really, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it certainly seems from uh, from a, from the outside that, yeah, Alec, it seems like you've you've slid in and fitted in straight away. Can you Can you remember what your first day was like? Um, well, my first day, I, I got off the boat at Portsmouth and I had all my family with us. And uh, I just, I thought I'd have a look. I thought it was an off day, to be honest, but I thought I'd have a look at the club, see what the crack is, met, met Warwick and Nate and stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, my little baby, she was only two weeks at the time. So I was like showing her all around and that. And uh, the lads were training on the pitch. And just what blew us away is how every single lad, and they'd just been doing conditioning games. Every single one of them was like, all right, mate, how's it going? Everyone was shaking me hand, like saying how Bonnie me bearing was and that. So it just, honestly, it was it was such a, I thought, at that moment, I thought, mm, done well here. This is, this is good, this. It's good crack. Perfect. So I think um, we're going to move on now to a couple of questions from um, some of our participants. So bear with me for two seconds while I figure out uh, technology. So, first one is from Alex. Three, three, two, two, one, one, two, one. 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 That came through crystal clear, didn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll we'll, uh, we'll reload that. We'll relay that question. It was, what's the best part of being a Saracens player, Alec? I guess we'll go. We'll go for you. Um, sometimes. Uh, Jamie George gets sent night kit that's too big for him, Ooh. and he gives it to me. So that's a that's that's a big moment for me. That's a great one. And <laughs> I guess what's the best part of being a Saracens coach? Uh, Two seconds. I'm just going to put this this computer and it's going to die. <laughs> uh, I like coming to work with your mates every day. Really, like it's uh, it's a proper way of life. It's it's. Um, there's a lot of weekends, but it's like you sacrifice all that time because you love doing what you do and you're doing it with your mates. So the journey, the journey is the best part of it. Like it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty special. Cool. Next, next one, Rich. Have we got? Have we got the next question? Yeah, I do. But I'm, I, I probably won't put us through the video process again because it didn't work out too too strongly the first. So, uh, do you have a best moment? Um, while being at Saracen. So I guess, Kev, if we start with you, it could be playing, it could be as a coach. Can you pick one? God, <laughs> it's impossible. Like, we've had some amazing moments. Like, it's on and off the pitch. That's the thing. Like, we've had mm. some unbelievable wins. We were, we were doing this little exercise a few weeks back, actually, talking about our favourite games and favourite moments on the pitch and stuff off the pitch. And it was... When I was trying to think about the games, there were so many different games for so many different reasons. Like there was, I think the European final where we beat Claremont and the European mm -hmm. match where we beat Toulon. That, those those games were like just big pressure situations, and we pulled a lot of unbelievable performances in the moment. And then there was there was the game when we had Baz sent off at home against Exeter. Yeah, I remember that. first game against that we had against lost to post the uh, points deduction and, and, the, and the, the hearing like those two those two games were really a big test of your culture and 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 like they were amazing wins in what we did there so it was like they're different different games for different reasons like two amazing moments winning trophies and winning winning a great game but then another one was like a test of what you're about and like how we're going to dig in and show what we're really about yeah absolutely um, what about you, Alec? Have you have you had a a best moment um, so far since you've been in the Saracens? There's been a few. I mean, I used to have a few more off pitch moments as well. To be fair, because with all the COVID, there's not been many. Um, on pitch, I'd have to say playing against Leinster was a big one for me. Mm. That was massive. You should have seen the hotel. 
Like ceilings, high, very, very high ceilings, honestly. You couldn't throw a ball and touch the ceiling. They were massive. Um, there was proper silverware. It was honestly such an experience for me. Um, just did you get a full set that weekend? Did you manage to get a full set that weekend? Did you? Well, of the cutlery. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaking stuff in my sleep. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a really big experience for me. Um, obviously, the uh, like from going from the champ to being having like you know, like six games prem and then doing that, it was just it was just massive. Um, but I'd have to honestly hand on that, I have to say last week was a pretty good feeling. Pine, I've I've honestly been dished up quite a few times by Ealing and champ for Jersey, so going out there and putting that score on them lads was satisfying. What, what what was more sat- what would you say is was more satisfying sixty points or or not conceding anything? Because they're two it, huge it, numbers. All aren't of it, isn't it? It's absolutely oh, yeah. all of it. It's, yeah, um, yeah, all of I it. Agree. Like it was there was there was there was bits where we were sort of we I think we were forty eight points up, and they had a period of pressure on our try line. But like how we fought and scrapped and like were definite desperate not to let them give any points but then even the last play of the game when we get the ball back from Rotti and then we have like some brilliant execution on the outside and we score a try there to make it 16 so it was both sides of the ball really I think so it was um, like the, the, the desperation not to let them let them score anything but also the execution to, to mm-hmm. take advantage of situations so. so so then looking forward to the game this weekend how much does a result like that uh, influence how training is this week coming uh, for, for the next game? I guess in terms of the messages and the intensity, not not a lot um, because it's about being true to ourselves really and what, what we're about. I think um, we've, we've we've sort of gone a little bit lighter. So we've we had one less day, one day's less training. So we're only going to train two days a week just purely because the heat, it was a, such a hot day and the day and the day of the game to let the boys recover and everything. So we've sort of tried to freshen them up a little bit, but certainly in terms of what we want to do on the pitch, it's about like the challenges. Can we back up what we did, but not just back up, but push it on again because there were some bits and pieces that we can get better at. So it's yeah, that was absolutely. So throughout the season, there's been I think we mentioned at the beginning how. You know, they're, they're, it's it's really physical down in the in the championship. But, but different, we kind of know it's different clubs. Obviously, have play play their own way. So I think it was Coventry and Doncaster in particular were, were really throwing the ball around a bit. Um, how, how different is the has the preparation been for for Ealing compared to, to other teams? Have you have you have you found that you've you've had to execute a very different game plan for them than to, to everyone else? Um, I think they probably are a little bit more structured than some of the other teams, um, and but they're they're very well drilled and, and and are very good at it. Like, and we've seen that obviously how consistent they've been over a number of years now and what they've done. But it's, but again, I'd say what what I'd say is like that we we really have put a, a big focus on us really and like what we're doing week on week and how we can improve week on week. So, and it's almost been a challenge about right. They might throw this, at us, but they might throw that. At us. So it's a case of us being ready for everything. So, but there's obviously things that we can try and pick up on and disrupt from the, not making it comfortable for them on their platform. But it's uh, we probably put a big focus on us really in terms of what we how we can impose ourselves on the game. Hmm. Awesome. So, guys, a, a huge, huge thank you for your your time this evening. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Um, Best of luck for Sunday. Uh, I hope, again, the performance um, is very, very similar for the last week as well. Uh, so, yeah, all, all the best of luck for Sunday. Uh, just a real quick reminder, thank you again for everyone who, who signed up to the webinar, who's come and joined us. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of an insight. Um, reminder as well, another reminder, the ways you can get involved with, with supporting the foundation this Sunday for the foundation match day is by entering the sweepstake. 
So again, it's five pounds. You can click on the offer, which is hopefully just popped up or go and visit our Saracens Foundation website uh, and you can enter there as well. Um, but once again, Kev, Alec, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck for Sunday uh, and hopefully a, a few beers afterwards as well. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks Cheers. a lot, guys. Appreciate the time. No problem.